What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now this is workshop vlog number nine. Could be number 10, but I think it's number nine. And these vlogs are just my chance to check in with you guys to ask how you're all doing and uh, answer some of your questions, show you some stuff that's going on in the workshop, show you some new tools that I've got, uh, some upcoming projects, channel updates, all that kind of good stuff. So without further ado, let's crack on with workshop vlog number nine. Could be number 10, I think it's number nine. Let's do it. So I'll kick off this vlog like I always do by asking you guys how you're doing. I hope you and your loved ones are safe wherever you are in the world and you're getting through this pandemic and this mad world that we're all living in at the minute and that you're all safe and sound. I started these vlogs during the shutdown just as a way of chatting with you guys. So I'm gonna keep them up, might do one a month and just to check in with everybody because I don't think the world is ever gonna go back to normality but we're getting back to some sense of normality now. I'm getting really busy in my day job again as an electrician which you probably noticed that the videos aren't as frequent now so I just don't have the time to make as many videos as I would like. So I'm trying to get one out a week if I can. So again, I hope you guys are doing fine. I hope you're all well wherever you are. I hope that life is returning to some sense of normality and that you're all getting through various lockdowns wherever you are in the world and welcome to all the new subscribers it's great to have you on board i hope you're all doing well and i hope you're enjoying the content so the resin table is all finished and i'm absolutely delighted how it turned out so i posted the last video on this this week so if you've not seen it definitely go check it out there's a complete build series start to finish how to build one of these resin coffee tables it's you guys seem to really enjoy it it's gone down a storm on instagram people seem to really love the look of the table which is absolutely fantastic and um, i think it's my First really nice piece of furniture that I've ever made. And uh, it's by far, I suppose, the most complicated project I think I've done on the channel so far. And uh, yeah, there was a bit of pressure with this one um, to get it right because I had brought a company on board, MID Glass Fiber Supplies. I really felt the pressure that I had to really turn out a nice table and I really didn't want anything to go wrong with this. So it was kind of my first resin pour, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it, done, it, it turned out actually beautiful. And uh, yeah, so again, thanks to the guys at MID Glass Fiber Supplies, Glass Fiber IE for supplying me with the resin. Table turned out fantastic and everybody seems to really be enjoying uh, the build series which is great too so yeah that's the resin table but my first piece of furniture really happy with how it turned out and you guys really seem to like it so i'm glad it's finished now because there was a little bit of pressure involved in getting this table right so yeah there we go definitely go check it out if you haven't seen it yet guys i think you might enjoy it now one thing I figured out during making that table was how to use a miter saw. So it was quite funny. I just realized how a miter saw works and how the angles on a miter saw work. It's something I didn't realize up to that point, but now once you see it, it's completely obvious. So I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit a better of an explanation here. I'm gonna use uh, this framing square just to show you how the angles on a miter saw works. Now some of you guys knew, some of you guys said you didn't know that and you would have made the same mistake that I made. So let me just take a couple of minutes just to explain it a little bit better and uh, yeah, hopefully so save you guys from making the same mistake or wasting a piece of hardwood like I did with that piece of oak by uh, ending up with the wrong angle. So let me just show you this. Okay, here's a close up of my miter saw. Now I was cutting a piece of timber, this piece of oak, and I wanted a 40 degree cut. So what I assumed was I could, set, I could set my miter saw to 40 degrees. I could cut my piece with my piece against the fence and that would leave me with a 40 degree cut. But what I was left with was actually a 50 degree cut. Now, because I spend most of my time with my miter saw set to zero degrees where it, my blade is exactly 90 degrees to my fence just for doing straight cuts, or I'm cutting 45s, which is exactly half a 90, I never um, realized that this was the case. Let me just explain this to you now. So that's set at zero degrees, which means my blade is exactly 90 degrees to my fence. Now, if I want a cut of 40 degrees and I set my bands or my table saw are over to 40 degrees, just like that, I will get 40 degrees across here, but I will be left with 50 degrees with a piece that's against the fence. So you can see this, the blade is moving off this piece not against the fence. So it starts at zero and you're counting up. So that's five degrees, that's 10 degrees, that's 15 degrees, 20 degrees, 25 and so on, until I come around to 40 degrees. So that's 40 and what's left on this side is actually 50. So if you want a 40 degree cut with a piece against your fence, you have to set your miter saw to 50 degrees and that will leave you with 40 degrees on this side of the blade. Now let me just illustrate that against the bed. 
Okay, so the same is true off the bed. So if your miter saw bevels either left or right or in both directions, when you set your degree back here, so I've just set to 30 degrees now. So if you put a piece on your bed and cut it, you will not be left with 30 degrees, you'll be left with 60 degrees. So you've moved 30 degrees off this line here, not off your bed. So if I drop the blade, the angle, hopefully you guys can see that now, the angle between the edge of my square and the blade is 30 degrees, which means on the opposite side of the blade, I will be left with an angle of 60 degrees. So 30 from 90 leaves you 60, and that's what you will get. So if you put a piece flat on the bed and you go to chop that now thinking you have that set to 30 degrees, you will end up with a 60 degree piece on this side. So you've moved 30 degrees off your center line. And that's how a miter saw works. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully that clears it up. It certainly has cleared it up for me a small bit and uh, yeah, it's not a mistake I intend to make in the future. So just remember, if you're not cutting exactly at 90 degrees or at 45, you have to take the angle away from 90 so that you'll be left with that angle that you require. So again, if you want a 40 degree piece, set the miter saw to 50 degrees. If you want a 50 degree piece, set it to 40. If you want a 60 degree piece, set it to 30. If you want a 30 degree piece, set it to 60. That's how it works. You're moving off the center line the whole time with the miter saw. So hopefully that clears that up and uh, yeah, learn something new every day. So there you go, that's how you use a miter saw. <laughs> I didn't realize up until this point. Again, I've been cutting everything at 90 and 45, so it didn't really apply. As soon as I'm gonna change the angle, I uh, yeah, cut a nice piece of oak at the wrong angle, which was a kick in the nuts, to say the least. So hopefully that helps you guys out as well. For, for those of you who didn't know, that's how your miter saw worked, so it should get you out of trouble. So there we go. Now, onto the channel update and stuff like that. So I've emailed a bunch of companies that I work with, companies that I spend my money and buy tools from, either in my professional life as an electrician or in my hobby life in here, everything you see me do in the shop, in the woodworking side of things. And one or two companies did get back to me and Workshop Heaven was one of them. So Workshop Heaven, I've bought lots of tools from like the plow planes, the Japanese hand saws, and then the scary sharp sharpening system, which I really, really recommend. So I, I have no problem spending my money there. It's a great website, especially for hand tool stuff. You could spend all day looking at that website, drooling over hand tools. But Matthew got it back to me and he said, he watched my video where I was preparing stock by hand. He said, you're using your Lion Nielsen low angle jack plane, which is a beautiful plane. And it's not really suited to that task. So he said, let me send you a jack plane with a camber blade, which is exactly what he done. But he sent me some other really lovely products as well, which I wanna show you guys. So I've been using some of these things and some of them I really, really like, especially the belt clip for the measuring tape. I wanna show you this. This has been a revelation for me and it's now out on site with me the whole time uh, working as an electrician. So yeah, let me get, give you a rundown of some of these tools. There's some nice um, waxes and stuff here, which I think you guys would be interested to help protect your tools. So let's have a look. Right, let's jump in and look at some of these lovely tools now. Before I do, I just want to let you know, guys, that I will not show you anything that I don't recommend or use myself or have not spent my own money on. So these things I can recommend. I use Workshop Heaven. I've shopped there a lot and they have some great tools. I've already done a review on Quangsheng planes and I really like them. So this is the number five that Matthew sent me. So he sent me a lovely number five and he sharpened the blade himself. He put a cambered edge on this blade. Now I did a full review of the Quangsheng number seven joint or plane and I compared it to other planes so you can see how well it did and uh, they're really well priced and are really well made and I think um, Workshop Heaven get these made to a specific tolerance so they're made to British standard so they are um, extremely flat and precise and are really nice tools you get a nice thick chip breaker with them and a really nice thick blade as well and the handles I reckon are cherry they seem to be cherry they're very similar to the Lion Nielsen handles and they're really, really nicely made and it was a really nice um, gesture from Matt to actually put an edge on this blade for me he cambered the blade he sent me some instructions on how to camber a blade properly which I will share with you guys in, in a future video when I'm going to flatten some stock by hand again you'll see me using this so if you're in the market for some hand tools or some um, planes definitely check out Workshop Heaven and Quang Sheng yeah, they're really well priced and are a top quality plane, so definitely check them out. So next up, he sent me two hand stitched half round rasps and a cabinet rasp. So we have a 250 millimeter number three and we have a 150 millimeter number seven. So uh, these are really nice, beautiful tools again and um, really nicely made. Now I haven't had a chance to use these yet. So I will definitely use them in some upcoming videos. You'll see me use these and I'll let you know how good they turn out, but they seem to be really nicely made. Again, all the tools you get from Auction Heaven, they're really beautiful um, hand tools. 
and you kind of do and spur you to um, get better at your woodworking. So they're really nicely made. Again, I haven't had a chance to use them yet, so I can't say too much about those. Um, he sent me a carving mallet. Now, I have used this a little bit with my new carving tools, and it is really nice. It's beautifully made, I have to say. This was turned extremely nicely. I'm not sure what the wood is at the top. It could be lead wood or something. There's a nice bit of weight to it. Um, it's nice and dark. I'm not 100% sure or what the handle is made out of. But again, it's a beautifully made tool. So yeah, delighted with that. So check them out. Now these are some of the things I really wanted to show you. So I have a marking gauge. This one is a Quang Sheng marking gauge. Um, it's really nicely made. It's a heavy bit of kit. It's a solid lump of brass. It's the wheel type marking gauge with the cutter wheel. I really like these. So you'll have seen me use my Veritas one a lot. And this Quang Sheng one is a lot more meatier and chunky. It's not as long as Veritas. The Veritas does up to 150 millimeters. This does up to 120 millimeters. But the measurement on it is both in metric and imperial. So you have millimeters and you have inches. This just has the metric on it. Now, one main difference between it is the crush gland on the end of the Veritas one allows you to kind of do fine adjustments. You tighten it down, there isn't one on this. It's not overly needed. I don't really use it that much on the Veritas. You have the same similar thumb wheel here for locking it onto the shaft. So you just make your adjustments. And uh, I have been using this and it's really nice to use. And it's handy to have a second one so I can set this to one measurement and this to another measurement when you're doing different types of joints. So yeah, if you're in the market for a marking gauge, I would seriously consider having a look at one of these Quang Sheng ones. They're heavy, they're really well made. Um, the markings on them are really nice and uh, yeah, really nice bit of kit. So here's two products that I really like and I've been using these. I gave these a mention on Instagram already and uh, yeah, these are really nice. This is one a product it's called Alfie Shine. Now I believe this was originally made to protect all your wooden parts or your wooden hand tools. It's a 100% natural hardwood polish and it smells absolutely fantastic. It's made from uh, beeswax, carnauba wax, copal, frankincense, myrrh, olive oil, cinnamon oil, and clove oil. And I have to say guys, this smells absolutely fantastic. I've used it on all my hand tools now. As you can see, it's kind of like a yellow max. It smells absolutely delicious. You kind of use it like shoe polish, so you just rub it on. You can put it on with a little soft applicator brush. There's a little Alfie Shine brush, and then you can buff it off. So you have your own cloth for it as well. Alfie Shine. So yeah, if you have wooden, hand tools and you want to protect them or the wooden handles on your planes, all that kind of stuff. This is something to look into. It smells absolutely fantastic and it does a really great job on the wood just to help to protect them. So yeah, definitely check that out. Alfie Shine. This is another one I'm using. Um, this is Protect Tool. So remember I was having the problem with all the rust on my hand planes. That's the reason I built the hand tool cabinet and put a dehumidifier in there because all my tools in my shop are rusting, especially in Ireland in the winter time. The humidity is ridiculous. And uh, yeah, it's just wet for six months of the year or more. So this stuff is nice. This is a Protex steel and cast iron tools, hand planes, chisels, machine beds, and accessories from corrosion. Unique formula it contains powerful contact corrosion inhibitor. So it has microcrystalline waxes that contain corrosion inhibitors, which is nice. Now I've used it on my um, planer bed. I've also used it on the table for my bandsaw. You put it on again, similar to the Alfie Shine, and then you buff it off, and it makes them super silky smooth, so you can slide timber across it, but it's also protecting them from rust. I've used it on now on all my planes, my chisels, everything that I've put away in and I'm not using regularly, and it seems to do a really good job of holding off the um, rust and also lubricating the beds of my machines as well. So yeah, definitely check that out as an option, guys. If you're having a problem with uh, rust on your hand tools like I am, then this Protec tool um, from Workshop Heaven is something that you could try. Like I say, I've been using it. As you can see, I've gone through a bit of it and it, it does the job. Okay, so on to one of my favorite tools that Matt sent me. This is the measuring tape. It's a right gear measuring tape. Now the measuring tape itself is really, really good, but the belt clip that comes with it is absolutely fantastic. Now this has been used and abused. I've beaten the hell out of it. I have it out on site with me now the whole time. It's not just for my workshop. So it's the belt clip that I really like. You get a magnetic attachment to attach to your um, measuring tape itself and then the belt clip is magnetic and it also has a built-in clip so you just slide it down you can't actually miss the belt and once it's on there it can't come off unless you press that release button 
So it's nice and simple to operate and your measuring tape is just always there now. Like I say, this is on site with me now the whole time. I always have my measuring tape. My pockets are now free to keep screws and clips and that kind of thing in with it. So yeah, this has been a revelation. It's one of my favorite products that I've come across in a long time. You get them from Workshop Heaven. I've not seen them before. You can put this onto your tool belt so it screws together. So it's really strong. You have also have a, a kind of a metal loop there if you want to hang your keys off it as well, you can do. But uh, yeah, I really like this. And like I say, it's on my pants. It's in work with me five, six days a week now. I'm beating the hell out of this measuring tape, but I really like it. I'll give you a close up of the tape now. Okay, so there you go. There's a quick look at the tape itself. So it's nice, big metric measurements. It's really easy to read. And uh, I have to say, I really like this tape back and front. So normal tapes I usually use are like these, uh, say this Milwaukee one. You can see the difference how hard it is now to actually see that, to get the camera to focus on it. So most tapes you would buy in any hardware store would have a mixture of metric and imperial. So you'd have imperial on one side, metric on the other, and you'd have it on the back of the tape as well. So uh, yeah, it's like night and day been able to read that. So I'm actually really like this tape. And I think that's the style of tape I'm gonna stick with in the future. So yeah, I definitely, re definitely recommend these, especially with the clip that comes with them. They're absolutely fantastic. Check them out. Like I said, you go, that's some new tools I have in the shop and some of them I really like. Now, full disclosure, they were sent to me by Matthew Platt in Workshop Heaven, so I didn't pay for them. But again, I won't recommend anything that I don't like or don't think it's any good. So if something is rubbish, I'll tell you it's rubbish. But <laughs> I love this measuring tape and especially these two uh, waxes. They're absolutely fantastic. So there you go. Hopefully you got something out of that, guys. And again, thanks to Matthew for sending me some gear to review. Now, on to your questions, guys. So I have a few questions from you here. So uh, Paul Fell, hi, I hope all is well. Well, how much does the resin tabletop weigh? So I reckon it's about 25 kilos. So it's a bit, it's, it's heavy enough. In all in all, I'd say the whole table is somewhere above 30 kilos. So there's a bit of weight in it. The oak is fairly heavy, but the top is definitely somewhere I would have to estimate around 25 kilos. I know I put 10 kilos of uh, resin into it and the piece of oak itself then was probably in around the 15 kilo mark. So there's a bit of weight in it. It's fairly heavy. So yeah, there you go. Um, Brendan Lenan, so Brendan, he actually won the fateful um, joint or plane that I put up. So I got all your emails, that's something I wanna to say to you guys. I get all of your messages and all your emails. I don't get a chance to respond to everybody, but I read everything you guys send to me. So keep sending me emails, keep sending me messages on Instagram or Instagram. If I don't get back to you, don't worry. I have still read the messages. I take everything, all your advice and all your questions on board. And I try to get them answered if I can. So there we go. So yeah, Brendan says, what will your next tool purchase be? I'm not sure, Brendan. Um, one thing, I, like I think I said in the last video that I really want to get is a air filtration system. So something I can hang somewhere around there just to deal with the sawdust. Cause the sawdust is, is quite a lot in a, even in a hobby shop like mine and you don't want to be breeding that stuff all day. So something to keep the air clean in here. I think that's going to be my next investment. So I have tools to do most things now. Um, I'd like a joint or a domino maybe down the road, but I don't know if I have much of a need for one yet. I could have done one when making the legs maybe, but as some of you guys pointed out to me, you can use your router for doing some of that work as well. So maybe that's what I'll do. So yeah, definitely an air filter, I think for in here, um, Brendan would be the thing to do. Jake asks, will you ever sell anything you make or are you going to make the sun catch? Or when are you going to make the sun catch? So I'm still thinking about building the sun kiln outside. So I'll see. Um, if I can get my hands on more live edge timber that I can get that's fairly fresh, if I can find a good source for it, then I probably will have to build some sort of sun powered kiln. So it's uh, something I want to do, Jake, but it's not something that I have plans to do in the near future. Again, I have to source timber. And if I don't source the timber, then there's no point in me trying to dry my own stuff. So uh, there we go. Will I ever sell anything you make? I think yeah, I was asked that question before. I, I do intend to sell some stuff maybe in the future. Again, I have a business, I'm an electrician. That's my job, it takes up most of my time. So getting, making this into my job um, is not on the cards at the minute, but I would definitely think about selling some of the stuff in order to fund the channel. So in order for me to keep making contact, content, I have to find some way of funding the channel. So maybe selling some of the stuff might be the way to go. So there you go. Why didn't you become a carpenter instead of a spark? And that one is from HP. Well, I think I told a story before, I always wanted to be an electrician and my grandfather kind of got me into it. So he worked on the railway all his life. 
he did electrical work. Now, he wasn't a qualified electrician himself, but he was a pretty good at the electrical side of stuff. So he would take me out of school and stuff, and we would do some electrical work, working on the house and stuff like that, when I should have been in school. And uh, yeah, that was the best education I ever got, and it set me up for the rest of my life. So I really enjoyed um, working as an electrician, but I also loved the woodworking, but the electrician was something I always wanted to do. Again, with the electrical stuff, there's a lot more technical stuff you can get into. There's a lot more, you can, you can travel the world with carpentry as well, but there was just more doors open to me going down the electrical route and the carpentry route and the fact that my grandfather was big into the electrical work as well, that kind of had a big influence on me. But I always loved the woodworking, so there you go, that answers that question. Now, on Instagram, I'll get some more of your questions. Okay, on to Instagram. Now, I've just dropped my camera on the floor and broke the lens so I can no longer zoom in and out, so... <laughs> I'm having a week of it this week, so hopefully this is still in focus. But uh, Ali asks, question for you and your upcoming Q&A. Is there any projects that you just build for yourself that you don't film? Or do you film everything? Also love the channel. Table is looking great. Uh, we'll be doing one myself at some point. Well, thanks very much, Ali. Ryan. Best look with your um, table. Hope it all turns out well for you. Um, yeah, just, just different projects that I do the whole time, um, especially when I'm working on the house or out in the garden and stuff like that. I've done a bunch of woodworking stuff out in the garden and that kind of thing that I didn't have time to film. Um, when I'm filming stuff, it really slows down the build. And like I say, I'm flat out with electric work at the minute, so sometimes I just have to run out there, do what I have to do on the house. So um, I might share some more of that work that I'm doing around the house and stuff or out in the garden. Bigger things that I'm building. It's more carpentry stuff rather than, I suppose, woodworking stuff. But uh, yeah, I do things like that. But most of the, all the woodworking stuff I definitely share on uh, YouTube. So everything I'm building that I'm building for the house that's uh, like furniture related or woodworking related, I um, record all that because it, it gives me content for my channel. So there you go. Some, some of the carpentry stuff that I do outside, uh, yeah, I just have to get that done so I don't have time to film it. But uh, yeah, so I might do more of that stuff and I might do some more electrical stuff as well if you guys are interested in that. So let me know. So on to the next question and here we go. So the next question then is from Malton Maker and the question is, question for your Q&A about the workshop. You have a Paul Sellers bench and retrofitted your great voices. In one video you said if you were designing the bench from scratch, uh, you, you would make some changes. I would really like to know what changes you would make from the Sellers table to make it your own. Cheers. Right, yeah, so my main workbench um, is the Paul Sellers designed workbench. So definitely go check out Paul Sellers' woodworking channel. He's um, woodworking his entire life. He's got a wealth of experience and he's got some amazing um, videos. And he's built a few different versions of this bench, which is his Paul Sellers one. It's a two by four workbench, which I um, copied. And uh, yeah, it's served me well. And the top didn't stay flat on it. It has twisted it in a bit. And I've added a couple of voices. So one thing I would do, I would make it smaller. I, <laughs> I made this bench eight foot long and it doesn't need to be eight foot long. Six foot would be plenty, so I would take two foot off it. Um, a hand tool woodworking bench, which this primarily is, doesn't need to be that big. So it's nice to have a big bench, but honestly, it takes up too much space. And I really shouldn't have made it that big. So if I'm gonna remake it, I'm gonna make it um, two foot shorter. Also, the overhang on the end. So I made or I designed a cam lock leg voice. If you guys have not seen that video, definitely go back and check it out. The cam lock leg voice works brilliantly um, and it's all wood with no metal parts. But the mechanism on the side uses a bar here. So my voice is a good bit in from the end of the bench. So I would chop this off and I would bring my legs that this leg voice is attached to flush with the end of this uh, bench if I was to rebuild it again, because I would definitely rebuild it again with this cam lock leg voice in mind. And I've been through a, true, a couple of versions of this, so I shared a bunch of videos making this cam lock leg voice where I went through the beginning stage, then I had a middle stage, and I kind of I've done it in one week till I got a version that I was really happy with. I use it all the time now and it's fantastic. So yeah, I would chop the end off this, keep it two foot shorter, keep my legs all the way to the end so that my mechanism for my uh, leg voice is easier to reach and operate and uh, other than that it's a fantastic vo uh, bench if you guys are in the market or if you want to build yourselves a woodworking workbench and you want to keep the cost down build it nice and cheap good and strong then definitely look at paul seller's video on how to build this bench it's a great bench and uh, yeah that's all i would do with it i would just make it shorter i would probably do the construction lumber, I used just two by four or four by two construction lumber to make it. Again, it was the cheapest option, but it did twist and buckle. One thing about a workbench is the top has to be flat because that's your reference surface. And one thing about this top now is it's not flat. So when you're trying to assemble things on it, it's a nightmare. If you're trying to use it as a reference surface, it's also a nightmare. So I definitely want to rebuild a smaller hand tool 
workbench with a perfectly flat top that's stable. So yeah, that's my answer, I suppose. I would make it smaller. I would keep the legs right out to the end so that it works well with my cam lock leg voice. So there you go. That's all the questions answered, guys. Okay, talk about the channel then itself. So the channel is still continuing to grow, which is fantastic. I'm adding new subscribers all the time. Now it's definitely slowed down. So everybody's gone back to work now. There was a period where I just went crazy when all the shutdown happened and everybody was stuck at home. So people were looking for videos to watch. So a lot of you guys really enjoyed the content and you sent me a lot of messages saying thanks for giving us something to look at and something to do over the shutdown. So that's great that you guys really enjoyed it all. And the channel still continues to grow, although at a more normal rate now, which is what I was expecting to happen. But uh, welcome to all the new subscribers guys i hope you're all enjoying the content and you're all doing well behind the scenes then i've been like i said i've been in contact with a couple of companies that i use hoping to get some um tool companies to uh, send me some stuff to review but again i've said to everybody i'm going to be 100 percent honest and if something doesn't work i'm going to say it doesn't work so uh, they're all cool with that so uh, there's a couple of companies i'm working with now so there'll be more on that in the near future and uh yeah, that's it. The channel has continued to grow, so things are taking off. I can't complain too much. I'm back in work, so I'm flat out. So the videos aren't coming as quick and as fast. And I have to go buy a new camera lens now because I've just broken my lens on my Canon camera, which is great. Right, so we shall wrap it up there for this vlog. All is good. Things are getting better. Hopefully everything keeps getting better. We'll see how this lockdown and this virus is going to go. No one knows what the future is going to hold, but I hope you're all doing well and I hope you're still enjoying the content. Now, if you want to support the channel, guys, I have a merchandise it'll be all linked below i have a t-string place if you want to grab yourself a t-shirt or anything like that that would really help me out or i have amazon links as well you can use that but the most important thing you could do is just like and share the videos and comment and interact with them that lets the youtube algorithm know that you guys are enjoying the content and it will share it to more people so all you gotta do to help me out is just give the video a share if you don't mind that would be absolutely fantastic so that's it guys i'm going to get out of here now that was workshop vlog number nine or number 10 i think it was number nine i'm still not sure i haven't checked but uh, there we go guys i hope you're all doing well and i shall see you guys in the next project so take it easy